one of the biggest RC races in the world has just wrapped up another successful event. The Nitro Challenge held its 19th edition of this storied race. RC racers of all skill levels flock to this race in a pilgrimage of sorts. Amateurs, as well as factory paid professionals, do their best on the challenging track under far less than ideal conditions. Year after year, the DNC looks more like a world championship, light edition. While this edition of the DNC was once again dominated by Ryan Mayfield, Joe Bornhorst had one of his most successful DNCs in his career. Would this momentum continue as the traveling circus that is RC racing moves onward to Texas? Indy RC World is the host of a race known simply as the Icebreaker. I crashed a lot. I was ticked off. I didn't come here to get second. Highest pro presence I've ever seen. The money presence was the most money I've ever seen. The competition was a lot more fierce this race. I am a huge diva. While a smaller race with fewer paid professionals would the icebreaker offer the same drama and excitement in the pits and on the track as other much larger races with a higher pro presence? I mean, it's always nice to race more events with more of the top 25 guys, um, but it is what it is. I mean, in the U.S. there's so many races and the teams kind of have to split up and send guys everywhere to kind of cover all the bases, but um, I mean, these events are still awesome. I like seeing all the big, the big name drivers. It brings more of the local guys here, and they, they more local guys want to get, you know, get into the hobby, and that's really what it's all about. So. Welcome to the 2019 Icebreaker, guys. I want to thank everybody for coming out and racing with us this weekend. I hope everybody has a great time. Everybody said have a great weekend and a good time racing. Indy RC World, located in Garland, Texas, a suburb of Dallas, hosts this annual event. But this venue has a rather unexpected history. It's an old bowling alley. I mean, it ended up being a perfect venue uh, when two owners ago decided to turn it into a hobby shop and RC racetrack. Indy RC was once known as the Fiesta Bowling Alley. But yeah, I mean, you know, this place really had that old bowling alley feel. Now it is hosting the most attended icebreaker race they've ever held. Indy RC has gone through several owners and several renovations. They used to make jokes about why you couldn't have big jumps at Indy because they end up in the false ceilings. And then uh, afterwards, right, showcase uh, higher ceilings, bigger jumps, uh, modernized driver's stand up there. While the pit space is limited, 
albeit a bit crowded, the vibe at this race is unique, and this is due to the tireless efforts of Peter Husser. Not only is he the manager of NDRC, he really is the heart and soul of this track. While this race doesn't qualify for the RC industry's unofficial ranking system known as the Top 25, a few factory paid professional drivers have made their way to Texas, including Adam Drake, as well as techno teammates Joe Bornhorst and Jared Tebow. Also here to compete and host a podcast is the On The Tone crew headed by Mark Santa Maria. Today is the final day for track preparations, and not just to the track. Final preparations also apply to the racers who spend hours prepping for a race like this. Again, because pit space is so tight, many of the local RC racers pit in customized toy hauler style trailers in the parking lot. Get the fuck out of here. Moving trailer? Yeah, I got two more. I'm officially done with the keys. I have all the keys. These are trailer keys. Peter is also in charge of coordinating all yeah. the parking. It wasn't as easy as just, here's my keys. It's, here's my entire Why lanyard with, well, because a lot of people dropped trailers off earlier in the week. Any work That's that was being done at the track today, Peter was involved in. Today. He is also part of the On The Tone podcast, which would be hosting a live episode later on tonight. Like, you would think I would be comfortable with this since I'm in front of a camera all the time, vlogging. But it's still, it's different, it's different whenever someone's following you and they're in your face. It's a little different. It's not a GoPro. It's crazy. There's nothing wrong with a GoPro. Mark Santa Maria is the host of this popular RC podcast. He is also a participant, racing in several of the electric classes. His involvement in this sport as a racer is what spawned Mark's podcasting career. Uh, we actually started the podcast because we it's like we always had stories to tell at races while we were in the pits, and it's like we never had enough time to tell all these stories. And, and actually how we started is we truly, I called my buddy to tell him an RC story, and I was like, you know what? I, start, I started to notice that there was a lot of podcasts coming, and I was like, we should do a podcast. And I, I said, all right, stop. We're not going to tell the story. And I ran over to his house, and I set my phone on the table, and we started telling RC stories. And that's really how On the Tone started. Uh, we published it and it went, it, it blew up. You're welcome, guys. Oh my goodness, look at that flame. <laughs> on the Tone isn't exactly your normal podcast, though. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, whenever we have these recordings, we have all the lights, everything's, we're actually recording and there's a lot of people watching and they're laughing and smiling and they think it's funny. That That's like the big high, just to kind of see everyone intrigued and Able, able to relate to the stories that we're talking about in RC. So. While this podcast may be a bit uncouth to the viewers, behind the scenes, Mark takes each episode very seriously. Right there. A lot of people don't realize whenever we do these things, it's so much work. And Mark is cool under the pressure. Dude, can you, look, I'm, I'm under a lot of pressure right now, right, dude? Like, not only the setup is a lot of work, but, you know, putting the agenda together, getting people to um, kind of, you, you got to have rules on a podcast, but it's hard to have rules on a podcast and at the same time have everyone just kind of kick back and be cool. So it's I guess it's trying to mix that professionalism and and uh, like structure with a podcast that's supposed to be, you know, just fun and free. So that's probably the hardest part about it. We're live, guys. Live, baby. I really like the track. I, uh, like For I this said, episode, in addition to the regular hosts of Peter Husser and Tyler Keel, Mark includes all the professional drivers in attendance. Oh yeah, and Tyler Hooks. After yet another wildly successful podcast, the OTT crew hits the track for some practice. I'm thinking I'm just excited to get out on the track. I mean, I don't. I mean, this track doesn't look that hard. I think I can get it done in like half a battery pack, maybe five minutes. It's too slimy. It needs to be in race condition for me to hit it. Tyler isn't quite ready to practice just yet. I am a huge diva when it comes to when I need to get on the track and when I don't. 
and I got to keep all my stuff clean. Like if it's any kind of wet out there and it's going to sling any kind of mud on my car, I can't, ha I can't be having it. That's why I don't race eight scale very much. But it's probably not the worst move in the world. The track will change a lot during the rather long practice session. Practice will run all day Friday and will actually extend into the early hours of Saturday morning. One thing that is a bit different than other larger events is that there is no seating practice. The qualifying heats will be sorted completely randomly. The pros hit the track for their first runs, and even though the track is tighter than most eight scale tracks, it is a huge hit with the Drake. The track's super fun, the atmosphere is really good, and uh, looking forward to racing. Compared to other larger races, seeing only three factory drivers is rare. Yeah, for me, I mean, these are the races that matter. These are the races that sell product and you build relationships. And, you know, it's a little more laid back. Like, there's still really, really good competition, really good turnout. But it's a little more laid back in the sense that you're able to spend more time with your customers and tune engines and uh, let them know what, what tire choices to go with and stuff like that. So, to me, these are the races that are super valuable and, and really help sell and promote products. We're going to open practice back up at 9.30. Took a little bit of a break. Craig's been in there since 11 a.m. today. We'll go till 5 a.m. Then we'll do another break and uh, make sure the track's all good to go. And then start with uh, race one, fall one, 6 a.m. With nearly 18 hours of open practice, one thing is certain. Caffeine and lots of rest would be a necessity for this weekend. It seems like all these big races are going to this five-day format. And getting that time off is hard, especially with family of five. So, but I'll, I'll be at them eventually. Soon my kids are going to be too old where they don't want to hang out with me. So. But for many, this three day race format is actually preferred. Given that the format here at Icebreaker is very similar to the Psycho Nitro Blast, or PNB for short, we can't help but wonder how much similarity, if any, there would be between these two events. This race has been a staple in the Southeast for quite a few years now, and it has continued to grow, with the exception of last year when PNB went to a four day format. Attendance was cut in half. Clearly, PTO is more valuable to RC racers than sleep. Sleep is valuable, so especially at these races, it kind of, you get a little more tired as the race goes on. So for me, I want to make sure I get some sleep as long as all my cars feel good. Uh, I plan on sleeping. Adam would definitely need to be on top of his game. Even without seating practice, it was clear that the techno duo of Jared Tebow and Joe Bornhorst would be tough to beat this weekend. Or would there be another surprise victor? After practice, it was clear that both Joe and Jared brought their A-games to this event. The 2019 icebreaker will be one to remember. Five thirty a.m. and the track is ready for round one, heat one of qualifying. The track didn't appear to have much of a groove laid down yet, so, like most indoor races, tire selection would be very tough to get right in the early rounds of qualifying. <laughs> Truggies would be up first, followed by E-Buggy, and lastly, Nitro Buggy. In each class, round one saw the factory drivers dominate the field. There was definitely a lot of excitement around the pro class, especially with the upcoming Calcutta. More on that later. For now, we're going to focus a bit on a racer that got a whole lot of attention at DNC. While a podium finisher from the sportsman class doesn't usually garner a lot of attention, this racer has earned his spot in our story. He is known simply as Little Bump. 
emphasis is on little. Even though it's the sportsman class, every racer in this field of 14 was pushing as hard as they could around the extremely challenging BNC track. Phi Long Win, a quiet and shy eight-year-old off the track, would battle hard on the track. He would be on the cusp of a podium spot the entire sportsman A main. Once the dust settled, Phi would indeed finish in the final podium spot. A huge accomplishment for such a young racer. Here at the icebreaker, Phi would be competing in the open class, so we would not see how he compared to the top drivers just yet. But this is something that too many drivers often rush into it's best to work on a race program with drivers at roughly the same skill set. Little Bump was getting around the track really well and was in a top three spot until a somewhat costly mistake on the back section pushed him back in the field. Pretty, uh, pretty happy with how you're doing so far? Do you run nitro as well? We run better, electric or nitro? Nitro. What do you think of the track so far? Good. What's your favorite part? Um, the straights. His pit man, Speed Bump, who just happens to be his dad too, seems to be quite sensible in his approach to his son's race program. He is keeping the setup changes to a minimum. And he's not at that you know, great of a level to worry about that. Just make sure everything's tight. Everything's tight, nothing falls apart. Is Little Bump taking a page out of Masami's playbook with the stick radio? Because his hands are too small for a pistol grip. He can't break. And uh, he's been driving for a long time. It's just, we just started racing last June. Round two would see five finish better than round one. Eighth spot. Not bad for someone who's only been racing competitively for less than a year. Up in the pro class, there's another young racer who just happens to be the incumbent Nitro Buggy Champion. Well, this race last year was definitely a big one for me. It really kind of got my name out there. And his name is Brandon Rose. He was laying down a TQ run until late in the first qualifier of Nitro Buggy. At 15, Brandon has a bit more experience on and off the track than young Lil Bump. I've been driving cars for around six years, seven years. I've been serious racing, traveling around Texas and stuff for about three years. Given that he was the winner of the coveted Nitro Buggy class last year, he has high hopes for this year's race, as well as his career as a pro RC driver. But the prospect of being a top professional driver is not the only draw to this sport for Brandon at this time. I like coming to the track and just talking to everybody and everything and just hanging out. And that anybody can do it. That's why I got into this hobby. And it just doesn't matter who or what you look like, what you are. And just anyone can do it. Anyone can be good at it. Just practice and then, yeah, you're going to be good. Brandon was quite nervous on the track with an eighth place finish. Round one wasn't his best showing. Hopefully this will be his throwout round. Unlike the PNB race where Mark made his first appearance with us, he won't be running any Nitro classes here at the Icebreaker. E-Buggy and Short Course will be his focus this weekend. He was still struggling a bit and it looked like his buggy was down on grip. To his credit, Mark is very keen on making his buggy better. Something most amateurs don't bother with. They tend to run what they brung and hope they brung enough. Not Mark. Up in the pro class, Jared Tebow has continued his dominance from the practice session into round one of pro buggy. It was pretty good, pretty good. Had a couple crashes on that big triple. 
In practice, we could jump it pretty easily when the grip was low, but now the grip's a lot higher, and it just seemed like it was a lot harder to jump and be accurate on it. So, start double singling and gotten a, gotten a good groove. Most important question, did you beat Joe? I did beat Joe, so that's a win for me. No, he's beat me more than I've beaten him on Techno so far, so I'm the number two driver right now. Nugent's number one driver at the event had a lackluster seventh place showing in buggy. I ran suburbs, the track was a lot different, and I just put on a tire that I felt would be really smooth and easy to drive. Maybe not the fastest tire, but really easy to drive. And in round one, with there just being the random sorting, you had to be able to get through traffic pretty good, so having a tire that was easy to drive was really helpful. After the final heat of round one, it's time for an event that is unique to the icebreaker. No, it's not the group photo. We're about to start at the Calcutta. It's organized uh, like betting three, at the RC track. The way it works is like you get to pick a pro driver like as your horse, and yeah, yeah. whether or not they finish in the top three, you get an opportunity to win the pot. What I'm expecting, I'm expecting the big name pros like the Tebow, the Born Horse, um, the other, the other. Oh, Drake. Yeah, Drake. He's kind of a big, big name, right? I expect them to go around four or five hundred bucks. First place will get fifty percent of the pot. Second gets thirty percent. Third, the third place winner gets uh, 20%, the last 20%. This, this is where the real money is made. Mark has formed an alliance of sorts, thereby increasing his buying power. He and his coalition, for lack of a better word, have just bought the first pick for the pro buggy class, and they have selected Jared Tebow. Wait, is that 400? It's yeah. up 225. Even though he's in a coalition with three others, his increments for the pro truggy driver bid are $25 at a time. $1,060. After, after $1,200, it's got to be at least a $100 bag. Billy Ray is on to something. 14, Will it work? 1420. Nope. 1500. You're welcome to everybody for this 1500 <laughs> is too high for them, so Mark and his coalition bow out of the truggy bidding war. 2000. Out of nowhere, a $500 increase. Maher Oda, a local, has just spent 2000 and has selected Adam Drake to be his winning driver in the pro truggy class. Mark and his coalition didn't walk away from Truggy empty-handed. Can I buy you? You gotta talk to everybody else. It's up to those guys. Joe, definitely. Joe absolutely went for a discount. I kind of take that as a little bit of a slap in the face. Drake went for like two grand, Tiva went for 1500, I go for 550? 650. You are the number one. I love you, buddy. <laughs> they got a steal. Yeah. You don't make them regret it? I mean, they're not gonna regret anything because they're gonna get a big paycheck. All right, now what do we do? <laughs> now I'm out of money. Yeah. <laughs> While Tebow is a pretty safe bet and buggy, will Mark's bargain pick work out? Or will Oda, along with his pick of Drake, rain on their parade? <laughs> After the Calcutta, it's back to qualifying. Round two, and the track is now starting to finally get some grip. It's developing the infamous black groove around most of the track. Adam puts down his second 13-lap run of the event. But it's not enough. Tebow bests him with a run four seconds faster to earn the top spot this round. He was now in a tie with Drake. It was pretty good, pretty good. Had a couple crashes on that big triple. In practice, we could jump it pretty easily when the grip was low, but now the grip's a lot higher, and it just seemed like it was a lot harder to jump. I, I had more pace than Adam, I just had a couple mistakes, so um, I just need to get my consistency right and maybe just calm down a little bit and drive easy with the grip and how tight the track is and stuff, so um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'll be fine, I just gotta try again. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Nitro should be good. Techno RC has an interesting program internal to their team. We got a bet going with our Techno coins, so the way this works is you can challenge another driver. Each of their drivers have what's known as a challenge coin. 
Jared Wiggins has challenged fellow team driver Tyler Hooks. If Hooks beats Wiggins in the Nitro Buggy Final, Tyler gets Jared's coin. This should be a sure win for Wiggins. Just look at what he's up against. So in the main, whoever finishes best gets the lowest number. I have the lowest number now, so I really need to beat him because he's got like 150 and I have eight. So that would be pretty brutal if I got beat. But we'll see how it goes, so it should be fun. As the second round of Truggy gets set to hit the tight Indy RC track, all eyes are on the battle between Joe Bornhorst and Jared Tebow. Jared is coming off a decisive win from round one, where he had a six second cushion over teammate Joe in second. But in a best two out of three system, it's way too early for Jared to sit back. The top trio of Drake, Tebow and Bornhorst are not in the same heat. This makes pacing difficult. Again, unlike most major events, the icebreaker did a random sort after practice. Fortunately for Adam, he has Tebow in his heat to push him. It works out as Drake would TQ round two. With Jared putting down a fast round one qualifier in buggy, there is a bit of pressure on Joe, the seasoned techno driver, to step up his game here. While the top pros are the odds-on favorites to win, Brandon Rose can never be counted out. After three laps, he's in third place and is closing in on the Techno Factory drivers. Similar to the way it was in Truggy, the three pros are separated, one in each heat of Pro Buggy. This may have slowed the paces of the top three, but it has not slowed Brandon's pace. Good, just um, try to drive a lot smoother and it paid off. I didn't feel that fast, but I got a third for a round. I had a TQ run, but coughed it up on the last two turns, <laughs> but I'm happy with it. At this point, qualifying was nearly 12 hours in. Was fatigue starting to settle in? It's been a long day, man. Wait. Bornhorst was definitely starting to crack. Off the track, at least. On track, he was looking sharp. So we've been here for now, like... 20 hours? 19 hours. It's been a long day. Joe just one point behind Jared for top spot in Truggy, and the two were tied for TQ Honors in Nitro Buggy. Round three started out great for Joe and E-Buggy with a win, but Truggy was a different story altogether. Should I tell him the truth? It's the truth. Well, the truth is the truth. We almost missed our run. You know, we were all uh, young at one point, and, you know, relied on our moms and dads to remind us when our races were up. We were sitting back here talking. And then Tyler Hooks comes down here and he's like, hey, do you know that we're up like next in, in like 30 seconds? Yeah, I actually looked, uh, I looked into the pits to see if my pit guy was coming up to warm my stuff up. And I told Tyler, I go, Joe and Jared have no clue we're up. And then he came running down, let them know. And yeah, it was pretty crazy. They're like running up on the driver's stand right as we're basically on our, our lap to start the loop. So it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. And my body's off, had the engine heater on it, top, or Jared's car is like apart. And uh, so we get our, our cars fired up back here, go right out through that door. And I got out there like maybe 15 seconds to go in warm up. And he got out there like five seconds. And we dropped our cars, came around and started. And then had good runs and went one, two. Like Joe said, the Techno teammates went 1-2, but which of the Techno tandem would win the final round and earn the Truggy TQ? For round three, a resort was performed. This may have been the catalyst that nearly caused Joe and Jared to miss their races. Nevertheless, they were on the track at the same time for the first time this weekend. 
I changed tires and changed my truck a little and was like right in the middle of adjusting my ride height so I didn't really get to finish it. And you know, I think I was just worked up and kind of just mad at myself. And so I started out really bad, but then the second half was super good. Like all 23s, I ran my fastest lap on the very last lap of the race. And uh, you know, I got second just barely. It would be Joe taking the win and the overall TQ, followed by Jared and Drake just one one hundredth of a second behind in third. With the track now in full-on black groove, it would be important for Adam, as well as the rest of the contenders, to put the best car on the track that they possibly could. Yeah, I mean, my stuff's been good. Like, I mean, all through practice, when it was wet track, it was really good. I felt like I was maybe a tenth or two better. Um, once racing started, it's we've been super close. Like, you know, there's maybe a run where I'm a tenth or two quicker, they're a tenth or two quicker, but yeah, as far as the tires go, like I think I've kind of figured out some stuff a little earlier, uh, maybe just from my experience being here in the past. Even though I'm running different tires from what I've run in the past, I just have a little more experience with what the track does throughout qualifying. But uh, the race has been super close. We've had really good battles and uh, looking forward to the mains. Even young Phi would learn how important tires are. It was a bad one. Um, I don't, he must have hit something on one of the tires that tore up the foam inside. Brand new set of uh, tires. So, we ended up last. Not too good. Nitro right now, we're sitting in A main. We're going to see what happens to uh, this last uh, couple of minutes. It's time for the final round of Nitro Buggy. Techno's top two drivers are tied with two points each. This final heat race would determine which of them would start on pole for tomorrow's 45-minute A-Main final. Uh, so I got the second round of Nitro Buggy, and then the third round of E-Buggy, and then the third round of Truck, so I'm three in a row right now. So we started off a little slow, but we're coming around. While both Jared and Adam were faster on the track, both would make a few small bobbles early on, and Joe led this final heat race from tone to tone. They're, they're fading, I'm just starting. I had to give him a little hope, you know? The scratches, right? One would be... That's what, that's what my car's gonna do. This time. As was expected, the factory paid drivers went one, two, three in each class they entered. Brandon's pace is nearly where it needs to be to hang with them. The only thing lacking at this point is his consistency. As for the Techno Coin Challenge, the battle was very tight. Yeah, we have the, the challenge coin. It's always you nice, see my but coin? I don't think it's totally necessary. Like I got 149. Jared has coin number eight, so I'm gonna make some big gains tomorrow. I have coin three. Stamp it. Coin three? Yeah. yeah. Point three, I bought on eBay. Bought on eBay, yeah. The Techno brand has made a lot of strides over the years, and they have adopted the catchphrase of Techno Takeover. Video and <laughs> this was certainly holding true so far for the icebreaker. Techno TQ'd each of the pro classes. Joe will start out front for both Nitro classes tomorrow. Even though qualifying is in the books, the day isn't over just yet. Lower mains will be run today, much to the disappointment of many tired drivers that were set to go home. This group of tired participants includes Mark Santa Maria's e-buggy final. Saturday's race program started bright and early at 6 a.m. Now, 2 a.m., it's still going, and Tyler Keel is not impressed anymore. This is, not, this is why I don't race much eight scale, man. It's ridiculous. I just want to go to bed.
another early start. Given that lower mains were all run early this morning, the race program should be a bit shorter today. At least we hope it is. I'm tired. I need some sleep. And, uh, That's just part of it. There's only a couple of races that do that, so yeah, we just kind of make, make do with it. But it's a lot of fun. Really. I've heard it said a lot of times, you're kind of upset when you're going through it, but two weeks later you think, oh, what a great time you had. Little Bump, as well as Santa Maria, wrapped up their e-buggy campaigns already. But fortunately for both of them, they qualified much stronger in their other classes. My expectations are really high for myself, but I started looking at the competition and like, there's always room for improvement. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I just had so much fun just in regards to watching all these guys. Um, you know, that, the late night, at first I was like, wow, practice all night. But seeing everyone up here and hanging out, I mean, it was so much fun. Mark made it into the A mains of short course, and he has high hopes for a strong finish in this class possibly even a win. The short course class is doing a triple A format. Similar to qualifying, the lowest result for each racer is dropped. The remaining points are calculated to determine who the winner is. The first of the A mains would see Mark struggling a bit. He would finish outside the podium. A2 would be better for Mark. He drove much more consistently and at this point, it looks like he would be able to drop the fourth place A1 finish. I try to club race every Tuesday, but it just depends. But our club race presence is pretty solid also, so. Yeah, I was hope that's why I put so much expectation on myself, because I club race every Tuesday. <laughs> I thought I was just gonna walk out on everybody, but there's a lot of skill here. Mark would get a great start. This, coupled with Micah Smith, the winner of A1 having issues, would give Mark an easy second place finish in A3 putting him on the podium of the four-wheel drive short course class. I can't always be good at what I love, but I had a good time. There's a lot of good competition here, so I'm not gonna, I'm not making any excuses, but what had happened was, there's always next time. Actually, I'm racing next weekend, so there's always next weekend. As for Little Bump, his Nitro Buggy B main was up next. He has 15 minutes to prove he belongs in the intermediate buggy final. The start is clean, and five, with a fresh haircut, goes to work. The top two racers from this final would bump. Little Bump would have an 11 second gap between himself and the second place car, and he was heading to the show. The start wasn't as clean, but Phi would be the beneficiary of nearly half the field getting collected. Lap one, and he was in fourth place. Lap two, third place. This is where he would stay until a disastrous pit stop. Fi would have to settle for ninth spot, which would be a disappointment considering that he was in a podium spot for most of the race. Even still, Little Bump was having fun. What was your favorite part of the whole weekend? Um, today. What part of today? So you back to school tomorrow? Uh, you like school? Yeah. You like racing more in school? I won't tell your dad, okay? <laughs> it's nearly time for the Pro Nitro A mains to be run. While Mark may not have had the performance he wanted on track, he could still walk away a winner in the Calcutta. Joe still isn't impressed with how cheap he went, and he just might be on a mission to rob Mark's coalition of some cash in the buggy class by beating Tebow. Or would Brandon Rose be back-to-back -back icebreaker champion? Now that longer races have been run, the track has changed yet again tire selection and setup would be even more important now. Not only does a tire that works need to be selected, but one that lasts. But before we get into the Nitro mains and find out who will win big in the Calcutta, it's time for the Pro E-Buggy, which will be run in a triple A main format also. A1 start was clean. 
TQ Tebow would have issues on two separate occasions, coughing the lead up to Drake both times. The latter was more costly as it was near the end of the race. The start was kind of clean, settled into a, a pretty good groove, and Jared and I were able to break away a little bit. And uh, then it was a little chaos in the middle. Both kind of got tangled with traffic a little bit, but it was a really good race. We were super close, back and forth a little bit, and uh, overall it was good. I ended up taking the win, so super happy about that. With one win to his credit, Adam needs only to repeat that feat once more to win the class. That is easier said than done. Tebow is out front again with Drake in tow. That was really fun. It was really good. It was pretty intense. We were pushing the pace really hard. And uh, yeah, it was like whoever was in second seemed faster each time. And um, I wanted that win super bad. I was pushing pretty hard. I feel like, um, I don't know. I've, I feel like I was a little loose out there and a little skatey. Uh, kind of like my first runs yesterday when I was kind of getting the TQs, I wasn't saucing. And then Adam and Joe started saucing, so then I started. And I feel like I've kind of lost my grip, so I'm going to go back to not saucing for the next one and see if it's a little bit better. A late race mistake from Adam would put Joe into the second spot. Usually I have really good pace and need like it. And I was just a tick off this weekend. I'm not sure why. Um, I ended up third in that. Um, and that's the class I was least happy with. And usually that's the class I do the best in. So, For A3, it was all T-Row. He would lead from start to finish, thereby taking the e-buggy title for this year. With a third, a tenth, and seventh place finishes, Brandon Rose wasn't too happy with his results. He's 15 years old, so... That's going to come up with, with maturity and with age. There's a lot of talent there. Um, so if he can you know, figure out the rest of the program, that'll, be, that'll go a lot further. The question is, does Brandon have what it takes to make racing RC cars as a day job? Further to that, does he have the desire to do so? I might need to check that. I want to, and I'm going to work hard, but I am... But yeah, I, I think I want to do it for a living. But whatever happens, happens. And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. What's your biggest Hello, yo. Okay. I know sometimes you want me at the very entrance. Yeah, no, right, right, uh, right below. Okay. Right below. Let me, With let me. e buggy out of the way, it's finally time for the first of the two big money races. Two thousand dollar race coming up. I feel like we're on pinks. Adam, he's a legend. He will win, 100%. Top qualifier Joe Bornhorst gets a good start, but by the fifth lap, it's Drake to the front. In the pits, there's a bit of drama. Yeah, we, we changed shock oil before just to put fresh oil and um, just a, a weird mistake. We forgot to tighten one shot cap, and um, so I did on my second lap of warm up. My shot cap backed off, and all my oil came out. Jared had a little uh, mishap in warm up, and um, they didn't give him a minute call for, for whatever reason. But um, so he started, I think, two laps down. So it was just kind of me and Adam cruising around. Yeah, I started two laps down and finished a lap and a half down. So I had the pace to win, but it just wasn't meant to be. Up front, it was a battle between Adam Drake and Joe Bornhorst. I uh, decided kind of last second to stretch my fuel mileage because I knew that Adam was going to do that. So the entire race, I didn't put more than half throttle the entire time. Um, you know, just kind of cruising around, trying to open up my corners and apex everything and, and just not use fuel was the biggest thing. Joe is taking a page out of Adam's playbook. He's extending his fuel mileage. Will this gamble pay off for him? I was going for the win. I wasn't settling for second. I was pushing. It was a good race and um, super fun race back and forth. I think we were like super even. Joe momentarily takes over the lead, but he runs into Jared several laps down in a corner. This minor setback was a thing of the past by lap 30 
when Joe officially takes over the lead for the first time. By the halfway point, Joe had built up a small lead, no more than three or four corners. On a track this tight, that's just one mistake. I kind of maintain that most of the race, and I would make a little bit of a run, catch them, maybe not be patient in traffic, lose a little bit of ground. And, um, but at the end, I caught him, and it was, it was you know, game on till the end. We were going to battle it out. While mistakes on the track hurt Drake's chances of winning, the death blow came while exiting pit lane. Adam ripped the back end off of his truggy, costing him a chance at the win and costing Oda 2,000 bucks. It wasn't on my mind, wasn't thinking about it until after they pulled my truck off the track and I'm like, shit, I might not even end up on the podium. Bummer for him, but again, really cool to see someone have that much like faith in me and then for it to be such a good battle, it had to be a super exciting race for him. And uh, just, you know, sorry, he, uh, he didn't come out on the winning end. While Jared was clearly disappointed and driving a bit mad, on lap 107, he passes Tyler Hooks to grab second place. Will this successful failure of sorts increase his resolve for the upcoming buggy final? Yeah, my car was good, my driving was good, and uh, you know, I'm just a little bit more angry now, so, you know, should be a good man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. While Oda was likely very disappointed, Mark Santoria and his Calcutta coalition, which included Joe Bornhorst, has to be pretty excited. Very late in the race, Joe is out front and on the lead lap all by himself. Jared did manage to gain one of his two laps back, but it was too late. That lap cushion that Bornhorst has would be enough. He would win the Truggy title as well as a pile of cash. There was a group of guys that, that went together and bought me for truck for pretty cheap, and then I bought in with them. And so I got the money for winning the race, I got the money for winning the Calcutta, and I got a little bonus too, so pretty good uh, little 45 minute paycheck. He was also the top qualifier of the buggy class. So this could end up being a good day for Joe as there are three streams of income available to him the Calcutta cash, a cash reward for winning the class, as well as contingency money from his employer, TechnoRC. But Jared is pissed. Brandon is hungry. And never count out the wily veteran. The pressure is on Joe for sure. Any one of these 12 drivers could very well win this race. 45 minutes is a long time. <laughs> Joe takes an early lead with Tebow hot on his tail. Jared is pushing, maybe a bit too hard. He makes mistakes early on. With a hot lap of 22.8, nearly a second faster than Joe's, it looked to be only a matter of time before Jared would be rewarded with the lead. Jared was definitely on a mission. These were the fastest laps he has put down all weekend. Back in the pack, the challenge coin battle was intensified, and the pressure got to one of the participants in this bet. I crashed a lot. Just kind of struggled. Just being consistent. My car was really good. Uh, just kind of couldn't get my head in it. Uh, Tyler did beat me. Congrats to Tyler. Well earned. Um, I think he got fifth. He ran good. I ended up eighth. 
it's uh, gonna be better, but I have blast. I started with coin 149, and I ended the day with coin number eight. So I'd call that a win. Yeah, that was what was bad. Yeah. So now I gotta move up on that. Nationals, here we come, Tyler. The incumbent champ was also struggling just a bit. It seems to have taken Brandon's tires a while to get broken in. Uh, in the beginning, my car was kind of edgy. Just the tires kind of took a little bit to break in. Uh, I ran S3 Fuse with lights. And then about halfway, 15 minutes in, my car got really, really good. I, mean, I was going along between fourth and fifth quite a bit. And on my second or third pit stop, I came in and um, everything was normal. And then when he threw me down, it just went. And then as soon as it went out of pit lane, it died. So we got it back and I was around the two laps down. I went down to like ninth, I think. And I, uh, at the end of the race, my car was awesome, just amazing. And I made a really hard push and got back up to sixth. Which it's pretty good considering I um, had a flame out. I was only about a lap down from uh, fifth and fourth. So I feel like if I wouldn't have flamed out, I could have been right there in that little battle between fourth and fifth and been right there. Three spots in front of Rose was the Drake, who was at this point of the race in a tight battle with Joe Bornhorst. The buggy main to start was a little rough, just I ran some tires that I didn't didn't really run and tell the main. They were a little bit edgy, took a little bit of getting used to it. I kind of fell back a little bit and then got back into third. And uh, that's where I ended up just kind of settling in and staying. Jared had super good pace. Joe was just maybe a little bit quicker than me, and so I was just kind of the third best guy in the buggy main. At the first cycle of pit stops, Joe was still hanging on to a small lead. Up to the first pit stop, me and Joe were, you know, kind of going back and forth. I pulled a little bit of a gap right off the start, and then I crashed. Um, he let a little, we passed each other back a few times, but, um, you know, it, it, it started to grow a little bit. And, you know, halfway, uh, my speed, if anything, probably picked up. And, you know, maybe his dropped off some. And then I just got in a good rhythm and, you know, really started getting a, a bigger gap. By lap 20, he would lose the lead to Tebow. Tebow was slowly checking out. Jared's car was, in fact, gaining speed while Joe's did lose a bit of speed or possibly just consistency towards the end of the race. Jared would take the win in dominating fashion. Uh, Icebreaker was really good. Um, track was super fun, had a lot of, uh, you know, some good racing, a lot of close qualifying, and today was was really good. Took the e-buggy win, um, had, you know, unfortunate kind of issue in the truck where I missed the start, uh, you know, and then I was ticked off after, and, you know, you know, the only, the only bummer is like, oh, I, I feel like I could have got, you know, all three of them, but I have to be happy. I won both buggy classes, and I felt like I drove really well today. And you know, I felt like I left some on the table with my driving yesterday, and uh, made good tire choices and setup choices, and you know, had a blast. It was it was a good race, and uh, you know, a good confidence booster after kind of some issues at DNC. So, you know, moving to the next race, I'm I'm feeling really good. Little Bump stays up way past his bedtime to watch the awards be handed out. As for himself, Icebreaker might have been a bit of a disappointment. He did make two A mains, Nitro Truggy and Buggy. Not a bad showing, considering how competitive the intermediate classes are here in Texas. As for Brandon, he wasn't able to match his success from the previous year's event. He finished a disappointing seventh place in E-Buggy and sixth place in Nitro Buggy but he is a racer we will be keeping a close eye on in years to come. For the factory paid drivers of Tebow, Bornhorst, and Drake, they enjoyed the cash awards that the pro classes had up for grabs. The purse coupled with what is essentially organized gambling by way of the Calcutta does make the icebreaker different to any other race we have gone to. 
I think it's pretty crazy. Uh, last time we were here, um, did, definitely didn't go for that much. Uh, the uh, the choices were crazy. The amount of money that's on the line is is pretty phenomenal. As with all things, there are pros and cons to this. One right, thing is good. certain, it made the pro mains just that much more exciting to watch. 470, okay, that was our, that was our uh, truck win. Mark divides up the coalition's Calcutta winnings. When you show up. He was tight-lipped as to exactly how much they each walked away with, but it was a pretty good weekend for each of them for sure. Are you okay with the smaller ones? Mm -hmm. That's, can you count that six, should be 600. This is the biggest crowd I've ever seen at NDRC World. This has been my home track for 10 years. And this was definitely the best one I've ever been to. It's the highest pro presence I've ever seen. The money presence was the most money I've ever seen. Oh, man, it was just great. Like, I've been exhausted all weekend, but it was worth it now. Now I get to uh, just sit back and relax, and uh, we had a great time, so. The icebreaker was once again a huge success. This edition of it was the most attended. But this event is really pushing the boundaries of what Indy RC World can handle as far as entries go. There were rumblings of the 2020 edition of this race moving to a different venue. I think keeping the icebreaker here at NDRC would be really cool. And now it's beyond what they thought their capacity could be, but they made some changes, they made adjustments to be able to accommodate just over 400 entries. And, you know, this is kind of the new bar for them, like the, this is kind of the limit, but they've done an awesome job. No matter what the Indy crew does, whether they move it or keep it here, I'm sure it's going to be a great event and look forward to coming back. For now, we can only say that the vibe of the icebreaker here at Indy RC World is very unique. With so many venues competing for the same group of traveling RC racers, it's important for promoters to make their events stand out. And thanks to the tireless work of Peter Husser, the icebreaker was most definitely a standout event. <laughs> 48, 48 hours, 3 days straight. That's what you think. This is Charlie Mack with the Behind the Tone podcast. Pretty soon we're going to be having Mark St. Maria and, and a couple of the guys who are bracing this weekend. So we're going to play some classical jazz until then. Just stay tuned. Spurgeon, move more to the center. I raised six the trophy. Class, no, no, the, the awards. Move the awards towards the center and low. There you go. No, okay. no to the to, to your left. Just take the damn picture, Corey. <laughs>